Hi, this is Michael Bauer, and you are listening to the Dynasty Hot Seat. Yes, hello everybody and welcome back to the Dynasty Hot Seat, the only Dynasty show that is a certified inferno. And today we've got a return guest back, the absolutely brilliant Michael Bauer. You can find him over on Twitter at the Rewind CEO. He heads up the amazing team at the Dynasty Rewind. Mike, it is amazing to have you back on. I'll be looking forward to this for forever. How are you doing? I'm good. So, Vi, thank you again for having me on. I do uh, object to the usage of the word brilliant, but I think that's a that might be like a UK thing. Like, uh, you know, you guys like to say brilliant over there. We don't say yeah, as yeah, much yeah. here, especially when describing me, but uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. So, also love the intro music. When I say it kind of reminds me like a, like a early to mid 90s, like alternative vibe. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. It's just, I don't know, takes me back. I'm an old man. So, just turned 30. Yeah. I, I, 30 well not looking at day over 30 mike don't, don't worry about that yeah. <laughs> you know what uh, yeah. you know what it is being on camera it hides the grays in my beard <laughs> so you can't really see it if you're up close you'd be like you look terrible yeah if anyone's watching on an ipad right now don't be pinching that screen to zoom in just keep it keep it where it is don't. <laughs> um, and uh, mike is here to to share some hints and tips for for dynasty and these 2023 rookies and then we're going to go through in a rookie mock draft and, and see what he thinks of this class. And guys, thank you so much for, for joining as well. I want to remind everyone, if you're new here, make sure you're subscribing up on YouTube or on wherever you're listening to. It really helps the show. So thank you so much for joining. And, you know, we're going to get right into it. Although, I think, Mike, we have to address the elephant in the room. Off her, we've not talked about it actually at all. This is kind of friendships across the water. You got a Chiefs fan. We got an Eagles fan. We're, we're putting our differences aside for yeah. For this little part and yeah we'll we'll see each other at the weekend right but yeah we'll we'll put our differences aside for now and get into your hints and tips i'm actually curious how how that works for you like the game starts pretty late for you doesn't it oh yeah, yeah. so what do you i mean what do you what do you do there i'm just curious like you have to watch it it's the super bowl it's your yeah. team what do you do so generally previously i would just kind of like grit my teeth and and just stay up and charge through it. But generally now I'm getting pretty well. Like I like have a little nap like earlier in the day. I like I'll wake up and I watch it. I might, I'm undecided where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do. I could be at home with some friends, could be at a bar. Undecided yet, but it's yeah. I've got to take a little tactical nap, maybe a few coffees, a couple of beers, and all that. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I get that. I mean, it's going to be hard for me just you know staying up. To, I, the problem is, I I get that it's the Super Bowl. Right, I, I yeah. get it, but we don't need commercial breaks that are three times as long. We don't need a halftime. No. Like, honestly, the NFL needs to know that if you just put a quality product out there, people are going to watch. They're, they're going, yeah. and I think this game is going to be real. It's going to be a great game, to be honest yeah. with you. I mean, people are saying this is what the NFL script writers wanted, you know, <laughs> blah, 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 which I think the whole yeah. NFL script writers thing, like, you see the memes, you see the, the tweets on Twitter. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. I do want to just address one thing, though, real quick. People talking about how trash and classless Eagles fans are. When you give us 12 hours to drink <laughs> and host the primetime NFC Championship game, what do you expect? It's like being mad at a shark biting you when you're swimming in the ocean. It's the same thing, okay? As I always say, Eagles fans, we, can, <clears throat> we share one brain cell. The brain cell travels with this team. Okay, it's it's that easy. And look, I understand most Eagles fans that you meet, we're, we're actually we're cool people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I've toned it down a lot since I had a kid because I realized I can't act like this around my child. Like, <laughs> behaviors are not good. So you know, I've toned it down. <clears throat> but I just I want to go to a game and I want to enjoy it. Like I went yeah. to Washington a couple years ago when we won uh, Super Bowl Fifty Two for the season opener. Nice. There was a guy there, dr- blasted blasted drunk and eagles fan and he took a whole tray of food and threw it on people 
and oh, he got thrown out and he's looking back to us for support we're like get him out of here man don't associate him with us so most of yeah. us are all pretty cool and you know that I, I feel like the people that go to the link because it's so expensive to get down there and it's hard to get down there they feel like they're a bit elitist you know mm-hmm. what i mean so they they feel that they have the right to act like that and it's kind of part of the reason i don't go to games one i can't afford it it's way too expensive and two yeah I had the best seat in the house right on my couch. I got a nice big TV, all the uh, yeah. drinks provided, well, somewhat, and I got a bathroom. <laughs> it's good, but, you know, most of us are good people. We're just not all that bright. Yeah, I think you, you guys have a bad rep, but every, every Eagles fan I've met is is really good, but, you know, you, you don't want to get tarred with the same brush, you know? There's yeah. A, like, it's just like, if Eagles fans were walking on water, people would say, you guys can't swim, right? Yeah. It's a matter of what we do. Yeah, yeah it, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, and... and I'm assuming that most of your listener base is, is overseas from where I am, not from where you guys are. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, fandom for American football teams over there is different. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how you guys choose your team, to be honest with you. I really don't know. I'm sure you guys all have a reason why you – I'm sure you have a reason you're a Chiefs fan, and I'm sure Eagles fans over there have a reason they're Eagles fans or yeah. whoever. Maybe there's there's probably more Jaguars fans over there than there is here, by the way. Um yeah, but, there's a lot of Jags fans. You know, there there are fan bases here who are worse. Like, from what I've heard, you go to Foxborough for a Patriots game, it's terrible. Raiders Ooh. fans are not nice people. And some of the most delusional people I've ever talked to are Steelers fans. And then, <clears throat> pardon me, then there's always the Cowboys fans. So we get a bad oh, rap. Yeah. It's yeah. the whole media attention thing. And it started in the 60s when we threw Snowball at Santa. We get it. Okay. <laughs> We get it. And you know what? When we threw batteries at Jimmy Johnson, everyone's like, that's terrible. But the rest of the NFL was like, thank you. <laughs> you got to take and one for the team sometimes. One last thing. Michael Irvin had a career ending injury at Veterans Stadium in 1999. The Eagles fans were not cheering because Michael Irvin was hurt. We did not know he was hurt when the play happened. We were cheering because it was an incomplete pass. Yes. And it thank was very you for clear. That up. Yes. So we actually don't yeah, want people exactly. to get hurt. Well, Victor Cruz got hurt at the link. Um, after he scored a touchdown, he tore his knee. Mm. We we were like, you know, we were like, oh, this is terrible. So, you know, we don't want to see. Good... And yeah, at least your mayor isn't coming out and trying to trying to trash the Chiefs, right? So that's a good step. I don't think so, anyway. I don't. I don't think so. I don't know. I'm yeah, so I'm about an hour and a half north of Philadelphia. Um, yeah. So I don't really pay too much attention to what goes on down there. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> Those sporting teams. Like I'm a, I'm a Flyers fan too. I like hockey nice. as well. So yeah, you know, I like the Phillies and the Sixers as well a little bit. I'm not big in the baseball or I'm sorry, baseball or basketball all yeah. that much. But no, nah, me neither. Um, football, hockey for me. So nice. That's, well, let's that's, that's um, my little tirade on the Eagles fandom. Yeah, a little bit. It's nice to clear things up on the Eagles fan. Yeah, it'll be yeah. it'll be a great great game next week. I'm really really looking forward to it. And, also, really Thanks, looking man. forward, Mike, to, to chatting some some dynasty with you. You got you got two tips for for everyone listening, right? So so what do you got yeah. for everyone? So I didn't want to come in here and be like, here's my ten simple rules for dominating your dynasty league. Mm. Sometimes less is more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So these are some things that one I've been doing for a while, and one I've been doing more recently. And the first one is you have to be honest with yourself and your team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You always have those teams with bottom feeders on it, right? You know, you look at the bottom end of your roster and it's okay to have those guys in your taxi squad, but you have to be honest and say, will they ever start on this team? If you have bye weeks or injuries, do you feel confident sliding that guy up or are you running to the waiver wire? And if they're not ever going to start for you, you have to unload them. Mm. Get what you can for them. I don't care if it's fab. I don't care if it's a late round draft pick. Get some guys. So you're laughing because you know how I am with the fab. Um, yeah. I'm actually planning on doing something about how you could weaponize your fab. But um, okay. you, you gotta. You always have to be overturning the bottom of your of your roster, and don't be afraid to do it. And I think part of it is, you know, as dynasty players and guys like us, a quote unquote analysts, we do not possess the ability to admit I was wrong on this guy. Mm. You know, we hate taking that L. Take the L, the small one. And move on like look hey lamichael p ryan didn't pan out i was a huge fan gotta move yeah. on kylan hill might not happen let's move on so um that and put eyes on players yourself now's the time of year where you see a lot of people on twitter talking about guys the senior bowl is coming up by the time you listen to this senior bowl will have already passed which i can't wait to watch it this afternoon um yeah. but put eyes on, on players yourself 
Okay. You see a lot of people talking, like I'll give you a guy who people are all over the place on Devin, a chain running back from Texas. Yeah. A&M. I haven't yeah. done a full scouting yet. So when people ask me, what do you think about Devin, a chain? My answer is I don't until I watch him mm. and I can tell you what I really think about him. I don't have an opinion on him. My opinion is he's going to be drafted. That's what I have yeah. for you right now. Will you draft him somewhere? If he gets good draft capital and a good system that I think will utilize him correctly, yeah, I will. I probably will. Where? I don't know yet. I want to look. Mm. And don't be afraid to go against the narrative. I'll yeah. give you a prime example. When uh, it was Tua and Justin Herbert both declaring, mm. I was team Justin Herbert, and everybody was team Tua, and they're like, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid. And you know what? I'm not going to say I was right because of Tua's concussion problems, which I hope yeah. it's better, by the way, or – even packs it in. Like if you if this is going to be an ongoing thing, dude, you got a life to live. You're in your twenties, man. Yeah. Seriously, live your life. But I just think that Justin Herbert's a better quarterback. So don't be afraid yeah. to stick to your guns. Don't buy into the Twitter narrative because that's when you bury yourself. So those are the tips that I have. Uh, those are things that I've been doing a lot of lately. So let's try to be honest, sticking to my guns. Yeah, I think that's really important, right? Especially the the trying to be honest one. That's how you end up with a team that kind of gets stuck in the middle right where you've got like loads of players that you just kind of feel like next year they'll come good next year they'll come good and they never do and waiting and waiting and waiting yeah so i mean sometimes it pans out like sometimes a guy will boom like i don't know geno smith right just i don't know where just like booms i don't know where but more often than not it's not happening so yeah you have to you have to trust like be honest with yourself and and try and get rid of your guys or once your but, guys, right? You know, in a case like that, like, you know, when someone's like, well, I, I really hate dropping this guy. It's like, dude, you can find another guy like that on the waiver wire. And yeah. in the time it takes, like Geno Smith is a great example. And the time it took Geno Smith to become relevant again, how yeah. many championships do you think that roster spot could have helped you, you know, could have helped provide for, be it uh, a player that even if they didn't start for you, somebody else wanted in the trade. So you got some good value back for it. You just you can't be afraid to make these moves, and it's okay to miss out on a player if it means that you're doing something positive for your team. And you know what? Look, Geno Smith when he started to become relevant again, he was a waiver wire pickup. Yeah, said he picked these guys up off the waiver wire, and especially in a super flex league, draft quarterbacks late in your draft. You know what I mean? Because they always they always somehow get value. Like Skylar Thompson probably got traded somewhere this year probably. because somebody needed a starting quarterback. So, yeah, absolutely. I remember. Was it Jacob Eason was the guy last year that he got traded about? And it's like, that guy's like hasn't played yeah. since. I like Jacob Eason when he yeah. did I think good arm, but then it's just one of those guys like there's sometimes where you have to look at these guys through a lens too. Like he's gonna be yeah. a, he's gonna go down as he was a really good college player and it just didn't work out in the NFL. Yeah, and we might we might be about to, to talk about some of those guys now, Mike, because we're gonna we're gonna pull up uh, our little sleeper top here. We got our Oh, yeah. Our mock draft ready. Uh, these are just the, the 2023 rookies we're going to go through. We're thinking we might might be able to go through two rounds, but we'll, we'll see how, how we do with, with time. And I mean, Mike, are you, are you going to shock anyone with the 101? This is super flex, but I think pretty standard 101 everywhere. Are you sticking with what everyone's thinking? I'm going to take Bijan Robinson 101. Yeah. And here, here's the thing. Unpopular opinion. I'm not super sold on this quarterback class. Um, yeah. We so the way we do rankings over on our Patreon, we do tiered rankings. We don't do like blah 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 one through a hundred, whatever. Yeah. So my tier one quarterbacks are CJ Stroud and Will Levis and Bryce Young. Yeah. But if I had to, I would say CJ Stroud is my quarterback one right now. I'm not a Bryce Young guy. I'm not gonna stretch Ooh. for a quarterback. I won a super flex league last year and Geno Smith and Jared Goff are my starting quarterbacks. And I nice. built around, you know, I had Jamar Chase. I had Devontae Adams. Yeah. I took Miles Sanders late, who had a really good year. I was hyping mm. him up all out, all off last season. I can't talk now. People are like, you're stupid, whatever. But you, know, <laughs> you need to have these guys. You could fill it in with playable quarterbacks later if you have elite talent. B. John Robinson's my one-on-one. Don't overthink it. I, I find it hard to believe that he gets a bad landing spot. Like, I don't know what a bad landing spot would be. Like someone said Dallas and I'm like, I feel like with the amount of work that Tony Pollard got, it would be Bijan Robinson's show before you know it. Yeah. I don't think it would take that long. And think about like how much like the ownership there love Ezekiel Elliott and Bijan's just going to be the new Zeke, right? 
Yeah. So I, I would love that spot. The only spot I think, of, like, if the Colts are stupid enough to draft him, like, I don't, like maybe. They need so many other things, and they're yeah. drafting so high. Like, it's not. I saw um, them. I saw a mock where they drafted Will Levis, and I'm like, I actually kind of like. Okay, that. I, like I like that, that one. too. And that would be good. Yeah. Like, uh, I know Shane Steichen, the Eagles' offensive coordinator, is still in, possibly on the Colts' offense or the Colts' head coaching job. So if Will mm. Levis did get drafted there with the running mm. game they have, I'm really interested. Like, really, really interested. But I don't You're- want Ethan Robinson to go to Dallas as an Eagles fan. By the way. I was about to say your Eagles are in with a chance of getting Bichon, surely, right? Just where you guys have got draft capital. I don't think they will. They have um yeah. they have some holes that they need to fill defensively. Mm-hmm. At defensive back, defensive line needs to be restocked, and they should probably start. Well, they I don't think they would draft a lineman, an offensive lineman in the first round. Probably mm-hmm. like second or third round. Uh I actually want them to take Jameer Gibbs, I think would fit the system a little bit better just because of his receiving yeah. ability and speed. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's go to pick number two here yeah and you know what i'm going to take jameer gibbs and i was like oh i thought this was a super flex league well it is super flex doesn't mean quarterback all right it True. does not look jameer gibbs this dude can do it all i love him as yeah. a receiver the alvin kamara comp um i don't hate it i don't necessarily love it love it per se i think i think he's faster than alvin kamara i i see i understand the comp i will say that i completely understand the comp and the the, the skill set and the tools that he has I think Alvin Kamara is a bit of a better runner between the tackles than Jameer Gibbs is as a prospect, as a prospect. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know more about Alvin Kamara than we do Jameer Gibbs right now. But in a PPR setting, in the right offense, I love Jameer Gibbs. I think he's going to flourish. Um, Now, I'll take a quarterback. (laughs) You were saying, yeah, I was about to say, is it CJ Stroud? You said he was your one. He's my quarterback one. And I'll tell you what, if... If CJ Stroud was, he's smart for coming out this year. He really is mm-hmm. because that, that 2024 quarterback class is looking pristine. You got Caleb Williams, you got Drake May, who I think is going to be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, these guys are great, but CJ Stroud, people are like, apparently, I saw on Twitter it's a hot take now to have CJ Stroud over Bryce Young. I don't, I don't understand that. Really. And, yeah, and this is the narrative stuff that I'm I'm telling you guys to stay away from. Like, stay away from all that. I like CJ Stroud better than Bryce Young, and here's why. This is a dynasty league, okay? And I understand that generally you try to play things in a two- to three-year window, but if you could have a reliable quarterback, like if you had drafted Kirk Cousins, you know that you could slot Kirk Cousins in. Yeah. Boom. He's in there. He's in there. You're not taking him out of your lineup. I I would say if you do, it's rare, right? So if you could have a guy like that for the next eight to ten years, it's good, and I just don't think that Bryce Young holds up. If I could be completely honest with you, he's too small. Mm. And I understand that he creates some things with his legs, even though he's not a runner. His escapability in the pocket, he's got a good arm, he's got it accurate. And when, you know, when people say, hey, well, Russell Wilson's small, Russell Wilson's thick, so is Kyler Murray. Yeah. Um, and then people are like, well, Jalen Hurts. I'm like, Jalen Hurts is 6'2. You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's bigger than Bryce Young. And I don't yeah. worry about his body because. He's got a pretty thick build. I know he got hurt, but that was him running, and that was a pretty nasty hit he took, too. So it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, C.J. Stroud, he would be my quarterback one if I ranked him. In yeah, I think I think that that's spot on. And yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, whenever I was looking over, like, some film and things for this class, every quarterback that I liked, I was, like, searching up, I was like, oh, they're not ready for next year. Like, is it, for, is it Pe- Penance from Washington? Is he next year? Yeah, Penix is next year, and Penix yeah. going back, I think, was better for him. He had a really good year in Washington. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just kind of he's kind of chilling over there on the West Coast. So, like, for those of you who don't know the way American collegiate football goes, unless you're USC, a lot of those West Coast mm-hmm. teams don't get a ton of love. Like Oregon State, yeah. Washington, Washington State, unless they're doing something mm-hmm. really special. Even UCLA, to, to a point, like Stanford gets ignored. But you get some really good prospects out of there. And Penix, who played at Indiana for what felt like forever, was always hurt, had a really good season, came back. I wasn't a Michael Penix fan, and this is another thing to remember in Dynasty. It's okay to adjust how you do things. It's okay to adjust how you feel about people. Penix is going to be a guy that's slowly climbing up my boards. I can tell you that. I like what I see. He's putting it together, staying healthy. He was pretty athletic, too. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. So... 
Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get you on next year. We're gonna be chatting about some Penix next year, oh, right? Yeah, um, gladly. We'll make it an annual yeah. thing. How's that sound? That sounds awesome to me. There so you, go. you've got you got Stride at one. Is this where you take Bryce Young now, or is Bryce Young your your quarterback too, or do you have someone like an Anthony Richardson ahead of him? He's actually my quarterback three. Ooh. Yeah, but I'm looking at it, and I think this is the point where I would I would want to take Jackson Smith and Jigba. Yeah, didn't really play last year. Had an injury. Which I can't remember off the top of my head what it is at the moment. No. Um, I don't know. You know, the thing about colleges too is they don't really have to disclose injuries like the NFL teams do. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish that they would. It would just, I know it's selfish because you know we want to know as fantasy analysts, right? But I just I'm curious at the same point too. It's like hockey, like lower body injury. It's like thanks. <laughs> it's really really yeah. not helpful. Not helpful at all. <laughs> Jackson's with the jig, but I heard somebody say, like, oh, he's small. He's six foot. Like, I'm six foot. You know, I'm not, I'm like average height, but he's mm. has something I don't, which is muscles. Um, I, I think Jack Smith and Jigba, no matter where he goes, he's going to be absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's kind of like a Jameson Williams thing coming off an injury. They're, they're not going to move him along too quick. I think mm-hmm. NFL teams have learned to not rush guys back. So yeah. see what happens there. But now well, to- like the day opposite with, with JSN, like, you know, the days of the big hulking wide receiver, as like the only option, they're kind of fading away, right? You can be yeah. a six foot guy and still be really relevant. Yeah, like everyone's like, "Oh, you need that stud X wide out." It's like, well, Odell Beckham Jr. was five eleven. Yeah, look what he could do. I mean, he could high point the ball one handed like nobody I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, but you're absolutely right, and I mean, there's still there's places for Mike Williams. There's places for Michael Pittman and guys mm-hmm. like Quentin Johnston who we'll be talking about yeah. at some point here. Xavier Hutchinson's another guy that I like too. He's yeah. big. And you know what? If you miss out on Quentin Johnson, draft Xavier Hutchinson late. I think he's got a similar skill set, just not as good. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to go with my second quarterback now, and that's Will Levis. And I'm going to anticipate him getting a good landing spot. Okay. Look, Will yeah. Levis, bit of a down year last year from the year before. Oh, but he can mm-hmm. beat on Clifford at Penn State. I'm a Penn State fan. Okay. I live in Pennsylvania. Here's the deal. James Franklin is way too loyal to his upperclassmen, like Joe Paterno was. Okay. Sean Clifford is a good college quarterback. Do I think he's going to be mm-hmm. anything in the NFL? Absolutely not. He'd be lucky if he sniffed a practice squad. That's why Will Levis transferred. He went yeah. to Kentucky in the SEC. He played some good ball. He really did. I like Will Levis. He's going to get first round draft capital. I'm pretty confident in that. So I'm not yeah. worried about it. And if the whole cult, cult scenario where Steichen goes there, if that happens, like just, just sign me up. <laughs> like just yeah. sign me up right now. They'll throw him in there day one. And they're the thing about Shane Steichen is he creates a very quarterback friendly offense. So it is, yeah. It is a lovely fit. Whenever you said Colts for Levis earlier, I was like, yeah, that just and just it it's it just you can visualize it, right? You can just see him in that Colts yeah. uniform. You can see him coming out and and playing well probably right off the bat. And they might they might do something like the, the Bears did with Justin Fields, obviously not designing as many runs, but kind of ease him into it, like little piece by piece in the playbook a little bit at a time. That'll be the right way to do it anyway. So it'll be interesting it to see be. where he ends up. Yeah, I'm I'm curious. Like there, I mean there's some there's some openings like there, the the Texans, um, Carolina has an opening, you know, and then there's some places where guys are starting to age out and Levis could be a good uh guy to sit behind someone for a year or two, like Los Angeles, the Rams. Vikings. Be a great yeah. spot. The Vikings, oh, yeah. they're going to – I mean, I, I think Kirk's got some time left in him, though. Yeah. If the Vikings are going to draft a quarterback, they could take a chance on – I think that they like the more prototypical pro-style quarterback. So Levis mm. doesn't 100% fit that mold. They'll probably take someone in, like, the third round. So, like, they drafted Kellen Mond in the third round a couple years ago, who oh, then yeah. subsequently got released. Well, I was not a Kellen Mond fan, by the way, at all. I did not have a single share of him. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Let's go to our next pick. And I'm going to take Bryce Young now. And some people yeah. might think that it's crazy that he went to the 106, but you know what? He's going to get good draft capital. He is. He's going to probably be a first round pick, and you have to yeah. pay attention to things like that. A lot of people, yeah. I heard someone say, like, oh, the Seahawks would draft Bryce Young. Okay, I don't hate that. Like, what do you do? You sign Gino yeah. as a one-year stopgap, and then Bryce Young learns for a year. Like, okay, the Falcons yeah. are going to be another place that needs a quarterback. I don't know if Desmond Ritter necessarily showed enough to prove that he's the guy. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, it's going to be interesting. And there's always going to be that one draft pick where you think that you have an established quarterback somewhere and then they draft someone high. It happens every yeah. year. It happens every year. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, but Bryce Young here, I think at the 106 would be a good value. Um, mm-hmm. So let's move Agreed. on. Can you actually click on the running back tab for me? Let me see what running backs we yeah, got. Yeah, of course. You got, you got, you know, apart from the, the top two, we got all of your, your main stands um, still available. Yeah. Uh, so I'll tell you a guy that I'm actually going to take here. And I know I'm not going off sleepers ADP, but create your own ADP people. And that's Tank Bigsby. Yeah. Ooh, I wish Tank nice. Bigsby would have transferred, to be honest mm-hmm. with you, out of Auburn. And especially now with the way the transfer portal is shaping up in the NCAA. And it should it should have been done a long time ago, to be honest with you. The whole transfer mm-hmm. thing you set out a year is bogus. Like, yeah. It, it's like if I wanted to get a new job somewhere else, I had to wait a year to start working at my new place of employment. Like, come on. Come on. Yeah. Tank Bigsby could do everything well. Like really well, he's great yeah. between the tackles. He's a hammer. He's gonna knock some people over. Decent pass catcher too. Hey, he stuck it out with Auburn. Like good for you, dude. Seriously, you showed you pledged yeah. allegiance to your team. Bo Nix went from Auburn to Oregon, which I think was huge for him. I love you know, Bo Nix. Uh, yeah, just I've, yeah, you're the only person I know that does. By the way, I just I just love the way he plays. I just I don't know. It's just something about he's entertaining. Bonix at Oregon is way better than Bonix at Auburn. Let me just throw mm-hmm. that out there. And him coming back for yeah. another year, I think solidifies like, okay, I needed this yeah, to yeah. be relevant. Just like Spencer Rattler going back for another year at mm-hmm. um, South Carolina. I think it's important. But Tank Bigsby, if he, you know, like let's put Tank Bigsby on the Bills. He yeah. suddenly gives the Bills something that they didn't have. That That's kind of my yeah. ideal landing spot for him. Yeah, I think a lot of these these running backs sort of after you know you don't really worry too much about about the, the top two, but but after that, I'm kind of gonna wait and see where yeah. they end up. And yeah, I think that's the only right thing to do. Like you could yeah. easily put in a, if Zach Charbonnet went to the Bills, then you're probably gonna take Zach Charbonnet ahead of yeah, of Tank Bigsby for sure. And I, I like Zach Charbonnet too. I actually just finished scouting him. Mm. Night. Let's see, I'll give you my grade on Zach Charbonnet if you like. He graded yeah. out of ten, six point seven one. Which would put him at a second round pick, which I could I think would be a really good spot for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and I think this running back class is going to ruin a lot of dynasty value for some other running backs, to be honest yeah. with you. Like this is a good class to have as replacement backs. You know. Yeah. And this is I I said it a few months ago. It's like this combined with the free agency at running back in this class is like this might be the final nail in the coffin for the bell cow back. It seems like bring back by committee is here to stay, and this is going to kind of solidify it. I think you had to take running back by committee with a grain of salt too. Mm. And here's why: I think when when we hear the term running back by committee, everyone thinks 50-50 split. Yeah, it's like 60-40, 70-30. You're mm-hmm. always going to have a lead back. You are. That's just how it goes. I see very few offenses where it's like split right down the middle. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is it's a physical position and you should actually hope for running back by committee. You should hope for that because it extends the life. And yeah. It extends the playing time for these players, which means it just maximizes your value. You just have to draft really, really well. And sometimes you just have to go chalk. You know, just take mm-hmm. the guy. Take the guy that you know is going to do something. Don't outsmart yourself. It's not that hard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, I love that pick there. Uh, pick number seven. Who are you thinking for? It? Pick number eight. You sticking at running back? You moving somewhere else? Um, go back to the all tab for me. I think I had my yeah, next guy chalked up there. So okay, I'm gonna go with a guy who right now is my wide receiver two in the class. That's Jordan Addison. It's Jordan mm-hmm. Addison missed some time last year. I forget what the injury was off the top of my head, but I've been a Jordan Addison fan since I scouted Kenny Pickett, and you oh, know, yeah. I, I was like, did Jordan Addison make Kenny Pickett or did Kenny Pickett make Jordan Addison? And as it turns out, they were both just really good players. So Jordan Addison went to USC, smart move, young man. And he was doing really well. He got hurt. It happens, right? Injuries happen. Mm -hmm. You're going to see people worried about his frame and his size. Devonta Smith, anyone? Yeah. You know, and Devonta Smith, man, he plays like he's about four inches bigger and about 50 pounds heavier. The dude's just amazing but jordan addison can do a little bit of everything 
he's a guy I'm not worried about where he goes. No. I mean, like, if he got drafted to the Eagles, they have a pretty stacked wide receiver room. But, like, mm-hmm. if he went to the Chiefs, yeah, that yeah. would be fantastic. And he's going mm-hmm. now. The only problem I have with if he goes to the Chiefs is he's going to be overvalued. Everybody yeah. overvalues a Chiefs offensive player draft pick, except for Isaiah mm-hmm. Pacheco. Everyone's like, screw this guy. You know, yeah. Isaiah Pacheco shares I had, I was getting him no. in the fifth round. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll take a shot on him here, right? Why not? Why not? Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, he's a seventh round draft pick. I was like, well, he's a fifth round rookie pick. What do I care? If I cut him, I cut him. If he's anything, he's then I win. <laughs> I win. And I actually needed him in a bunch of spots this year to stay competitive. <clears throat> yeah. But he'll get overvalued if he goes there. That's that like there in the bills. Players get yeah, way overvalued see. if they go there. And I, I get it. I get it because you know what you're doing? You're attaching that player to the quarterback. Yeah. And I, I understand, but to a point it's like, all right, come on. But Jordan Addison, I worry about like if he would go to um, the Bills, to be honest with you, because it would be hard for him to slide in right away. The Eagles, I don't think he'd get a ton of playing time. If he went to the Chiefs, that'd be great. I would like to see him at a place like the Chargers, to be honest with you. A little bit of a different skill set than like Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. They have Jalen Guyton out there and like Josh Palmer and stuff like that. I'd love to see him go to a place like that. I don't want to see him go to a place that doesn't know what they're doing. Like I would hate to see him in Carolina or Texas or something like that. So I'd like to see him go to a good established offense. Um, but let's yeah. go to our next pick here. And I'm actually going to take Quentin Johnston. So we're going to go back mm-hmm. to back wide receivers here. Don't scout the helmet, everybody. Cause you know, Jalen Rager came from TCU. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, we got man. it. We got that one wrong. That and JJ is <laughs> white side. Okay. Whatever. Oh. Um, yeah. That one broke my heart, man. Like, yeah. I thought we had something in the second round there. Oh well, we're gonna do. Is he, Listen, is he playing tight? Is he playing tight end now or Sega White Side? You know, he to I'm, do that? I'm not exactly sure what he's doing, and I also really yeah. don't. Care. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't. Know, whatever. <laughs> um, Quentin Johnson, man, six four. I think 215 pounds, lanky, yeah. rangy, athletic, good route running, mm. great high pointing and contested catch it, catchability. He has some things he needs to clean up, but. He's a college prospect. He's not a polished NFL player. Of course, these guys yeah. are going to have some things that they have to clean up. It's that easy. But I like mm. him here at the 1-9. There is a possibility he ends up being the best wide receiver from this class. Yeah, easily. It's possible. There's also a possibility he's not. He's the third best, which is why I took him here. Um, yeah. I like I like the fit at the... I, I don't know I, I don't know about you, Mike. I kind of get the vibe that the Atlanta Falcons are trying to build this kind of like basketball team almost. I like the kind of fit there. They've got a yeah. lot of tall guys. Like I think that would be a nice fit for them if they can get the quarterback right. I heard the Giants too. Like they re-signed oh, yeah. Daniel Jones and then they draft Quentin Johnson. I'm like Johnston. Sorry, I'm like yeah. Mm-hmm. He's he probably comes in and is startable from day one. Yeah, I think they move on from Kenny Galladay. Like Sterling Shepard's always hurt. Uh, Wondell Robinson's coming off an injury. He's a lot smaller. He's more like a gadgety guy to me. Like they have Isaiah Hodgins there, Darius Slayton's there, and those they're they're mm-hmm. guys. They're just they're guys. They're bodies. So yeah. I think he would like if Quentin Johnston. If I ha- if I drafted him, and he went to the Giants, I'd probably try to find a way to get him on some of my lineups week one. Yeah, just get him right in there, see what happens, go hmm. from there. Um, let's nice. go to the one ten. So I see Anthony Richardson sitting there. Don't click on him. I'm just saying I'm not there yet. <laughs> He's there. I know. Um, I'm actually going with, I'm going to go with Zach Charbonnet here. So finished my full scout on Zach Charbonnet. Zach Charbonnet is going to make the NFL very happy. Mm -hmm. One cut runner with power, great vision, great patience, and a bit better of a receiver than his frame would suggest at 6'1", 220. A lot of people thought it was stupid for him coming back for his senior year. I don't. I'm glad he did because if he would have declared last year, you would have had the whole, oh, well, he just had that one fluky year at UCLA. Well, he came back and had a better year. Now you're hearing, oh, what's the Pac-12? It's like, oh, shut up. It's like, can these guys do nothing right? You know what I mean? Like, come yeah. on. He ran it's like him. Eagles. It's like Eagles fans, right? You can't. It's not like, come on. We can't win. But he ran for yeah. 1,300 yards last year. Like, the dude is good. He, he's yeah. good. I have no – he's good pass blocker too which is really important i understand it doesn't get you fantasy points but if you're on a team and you're getting your quarterback killed you're gonna be on the bench it's that i have one one thing about zach charbonnet right i'll let you love him 
are we sure he's definitely 22? <laughs> like, what was that? That guy looks 40 years old. <laughs> like, at 22. I don't know. Like, man, some people's genetics, they just age different. You know what I mean? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, man. But, but the good thing about that is he does play like a grown man. So he got that advantage right away. So, yeah, love yeah. Zach Sharp on there. And this is one thing that I, I love about the transfer portal. Had he had to stay at Michigan, I don't think we'd yeah. be talking about Zach Sharpening here in the first round. And no, it's just not it's not it's not about the school. Sometimes players just adapt to different schools differently, different systems, different cultures. You know what I mean? So but he, he came in the LCA, he killed it. Um, I still hate Chip Kelly, but let's move on. Yeah, and I will always hate Chip Kelly. Uh, although actually, no, Chip Kelly did hire Jeff Stoutland, which ended up being one of the best hires in Eagles history. That's our offensive line coach. So um yeah, I have, I have no complaints there. Um, can you <laughs> click on the running back tab for me, please? Yes, let's have a look at who's sitting left. you got Sean Tucker and Zach Evans there. Devon H. And we talked about and a couple other guys there, too. We're going to go with Sean Tucker here. Oh, yeah. At the 111, which I like. And he's mm-hmm. another guy I saw mocked a few times to the Eagles, which would be great. He's a physical yeah. runner, good receiver, really good in open space. He doesn't have a lot of wasted motion either, which I really appreciate. Mm. Like, you know, some guys dance a little too much. Like, that's the one thing I will... The one knock I have on Jameer Gibbs is he tends to dance just a little too much sometimes. Yeah. Sean Tucker doesn't do that. He's really decisive and just hits it hard and boom. You, you know, always falling forward, legs, legs always pumping. So that's one thing I look for. I remember when I played football when I was younger, our coach used to tell... The running backs like keep those legs moving because you never know what could happen and then conversely on the defensive side where i played it was always stop their legs if their legs can't yeah. move, they're not going anywhere so i know it's obviously we're scouting offensively um but yeah the legs always falling forward legs always pumping stuff like that's huge you know it's, it's a game of inches how, at the end of the day how fast do you think sean tucker is i mean i was talking to this but with john bauer last week and faster he sort of thinks he oh uh, yeah he's faster than me <laughs> yeah he was thinking he might come out and run something in the four fives. I thought I thought he was a bit faster than that. Looking at him, I don't hate four. Yeah, here's the thing: like a lot of people, I think if you're four or five at a running back, you're still okay. Four yeah, yeah. six, mm, cutting it, and then four seven, you're just Benny Snell. <laughs> I, mean, I had like I was a huge Benny Snell fan, and then he ran a four seven, and I'm like, okay, well, I have to hate you now. It sucks, but four yeah, five is plus- fine. I mean, Everyone called him Benny Sneal as well. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, there, we had my daughter has an aquarium with a snail in it, and I tried to name the snail Benny, and she said no. <laughs> After Benny oh. Snail, um, but the snail has a blue shell, so she named it Bluey, which is fine. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, which is cool. It's actually it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool looking. Like I like it. Nice. But I, really off topic there. Um, yeah, <laughs> okay with that because you think about it, you know. Those long breakaway runs are fine. You can't design an offense around that. You know what I mean? Mm. Running the you run to set the pass up, and you're typically typically playing in a ten yard window. You know, yeah. and going back to when I played football, the coaches said you want to get four yards on every play. You do that three times, you get a first down. So if you're averaging yeah. four yards a carry or more, you're doing a okay. And I think mm-hmm. you could definitely do that in the NFL. Just the vision for me, he sees the block set up well. And if he gets behind a good offensive line, it's going to be just fine. So 4-5 speed does not does not bother me at all. Mm, at all. Nice. So, yeah, I, I like that pick there. You may notice like some people are saying, like, oh, Zach Evans is still on the board. I'm not there yet with Zach Evans. Zach Evans is one of the most frustrating players to me. Maybe if he gets drafted here, we'll talk about him. Um, but let's see. Can you go back? Let me see the all tab again, please. Let's have a look. So Anthony Richardson, you talked about still there. Michael Mayer, uh, the the number one tight end. Not my favorite tight end in this class, but going number one um, so at the minute. I understand why he's the number one tight end. Let, let's do this. We're going to do Josh Downs at the 112, and then we're going to yeah. all roll right into Michael Mayer at the 2-1, and then I'll just combine everything. How's that sound? That sounds awesome to me. Josh Downs, like 5'10", something like that. Another lengthy, you know, like lean, rangy small guy but like mags was saying before like the the days of the towering wide receiver is kind of over josh yeah. downs can be schemed open and he's going to be just fine and a guy like mm-hmm. michael Mayer, he's not my favorite tight end either but i understand why he's the number one tight end i completely yeah. get it just from the skill set that he has he's pretty nfl ready 
Some of these yeah. other guys aren't. He's not mine. My favorite tight ends in the class are Dalton Kincaid and Luke Musgrave. And I'm yes. a big Sam Laporta guy, too. I just finished my scout on Sam Laporta from Iowa. I watch the Iowa offense, people, so you don't have to. You're welcome. <laughs> I should be given like a thousand dollars for that because oh my god, you want to talk about an offense that is stuck in the Stone Age, man. You poor Iowa fans. I'm so sorry for you. But listen, Sam Laporta, he's a guy that I would love in like the fourth, fifth rounds. Dude could do everything. So there's I think this tight end class is going to be really, really freaking good. Yeah. There's another guy too, Tucker Craft from South Dakota State. Yes. He's saying yeah. The next Dallas Goddard. No, 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 mm-hmm. no. He's not the next Dallas Goddard. Do not scout the helmet. He's nowhere near as athletic as Dallas Goddard. He's a fantastic blocker, though. Fantastic blocker. That will get him on the field in the NFL. We'll get him opportunities. So there's other guys that I like more. And right here, I'm going to take Keishon Butte. And I'm oh, yeah. going to take him under the principle that I saw a mock that he went to the New Orleans Saints. Now, if he goes to the New okay. Orleans Saints, I think your starting wideouts are Jarvis Landry, Chris Olave, Keishon Butte. Landry probably in the slot. I like that. That's nice. That's I nice. like that a lot. We're talking. A lot of people are talking about off the field stuff. I don't know if you heard about what happened with him before the bowl game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was consensual. He's an adult. Yeah. So is the other person. He, like, let it go, people. Okay, he's an adult. There was no no crimes committed there. Okay, just a crime of passion. That's all. <laughs> but I like Keishan Butte. Um, probably should have declared after last season, to be honest with you. Yeah. This was kind of a shit show for him. We yeah. would probably be talking with about him in the mid to back half of the first round last year. And this mm-hmm. probably mock this is where he might be going a little early, but I like him. I like him, and I'm willing to take the chance on him at the 2-2. Can we go back mm-hmm. to the running back tab, please? Let's see what we of got left we- running back. Yeah. Tab. So, Zach Evans, who you talked about earlier, yeah, we're both kind of in agreement. I'm not there yet on, on Zach Evans either. And almost the opposite. I'm, I love what I see from Devon Etienne as well. Like just, it's, he's so fun to watch. I don't know how well that will translate to the NFL, but I just love yeah, watching him play. It, it depends on, it depends on dra- landing spot. Look, go over to the wide receiver tab for me, please. Let's have a look. Uh, Zeph Flowers, Rasheed Rice, Cedric Tillman, and uh, one guy I really like there is Jalen Hyatt still yep. available. So if you want to, you could go to our YouTube channel. We just released the Jalen Hyatt video last week. Um, go yeah. check it out. You can see our thoughts, please, because that video did really poorly for some reason, and everyone was talking about Jalen Hyatt. I'm like, you people are talking about him. We're giving you what you want. Yeah. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to draft Jalen Hyatt right here. I'll give you a little nice. insight on what he does well. Tracks the ball well. He's a speedster. And I think yeah. in the NFL, he could be a downfield threat and he could be a really good screen wide receiver. He's put on a little bit more weight. He needs to be a little bit more physical. He needs to have a little bit more concentration at the catch point. But I think he's going to get drafted really high. I do. Yeah. And my question to people is, if you believed in Tyquan Thornton, why not Jalen Hyatt? Jalen yeah. Hyatt did more in college than Tyquan Thornton did. And I could see a similar skill set. Okay. I just love I just love what he does when he catches the ball. It's like he yeah, just, after like, the catch is great. He, he comes to life almost like well, I was gonna ask you about about I kind of I've only watched maybe five or six games of, of Josh Downs who you took earlier. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that with Josh Downs, but I see it with Jalen Hyatt. But then Josh Downs has got other like qualities that are better than Hyatt. I, I'm torn between those two at the minute, actually. I think Josh Downs is probably the more I don't want to say complete prospect, but the the yeah. readier prospect. To come in yeah. and contribute right away. Whereas Jalen Hyatt could be, I think Jalen Hyatt, by the way, perfect best ball wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Absolutely perfect. You know what I mean? Like he, you, especially if it's like you, he's in there, you're good, be fine for now. Yeah. He, he just needs to clean some things up. But I think it's, it's important to note that the Jalen Hyatt emergence might not have ever happened if Cedric Tillman didn't get hurt. It's mm-hmm. a really important thing to consider. So we will see. I'm also not taking Cedric Tillman yet. Um, although I do like Cedric Tillman a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had my next guy thought about. Can you go back to the running back tab for me? Yeah, let's have a look who's there still. Let's take Zach Evans here. And let's okay. talk about Zach Evans. The mock yeah. I saw, he went to the Bears. This is assuming that David Montgomery leaves. Yeah. Then you have Khalil Herbert and Zach Evans. Okay. Okay. 
Maybe with some NFL coaching, he'll be good. TCU, Evan, mm. Zach Evans was better than Ole Miss. Zach Evans lost a lot of touches to Quinchon Judkins. Mm -hmm. The talent is there. I don't know about up here. It's yeah. almost like he doesn't care sometimes. He is just so frustrating to watch. Yeah. So I'm concerned, like, does he come in and get that paycheck and be like, I got what I wanted whatever i don't know i re i really don't know there there has to be a percentage of of football players like that right where you like you got people all around the world that don't like their jobs there has to be a certain yeah. percentage of football players that actually don't I'm really sure. like playing football but they're just really good at it yeah but here's the thing i hate my job but if you're paying me a million dollars a year to do it i'm gonna do it with augusto yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> thank you um so we'll see with zach evans and you know he's a guy if if he if he shows up and he was your two of two, four, great. If yeah. not, all right, I wasted a second round pick. Yeah. Shame I've on. been doing, I've been doing sort of um, industry wide ADP, like taking mock drafts from, from guys like yourselves and other people. And Zach Evans week one was up in the first round. Then he dropped 11 places and he rose five places last week. He's all over the place at the minute. If you need any mock drafts, because we do some that don't get published as well. Let me know. Oh yeah. Um, I will I send will you a link. Yeah, just let me know. I'll I'll send you whatever you want. And then sometimes, uh, you know, like with our our patrons, we um we just like randomly do mock drafts. Like the yeah. one Saturday night, my wife was giving my daughter a bath, and I was like, let's do a mock draft quick, like yeah. quick timer, three rounds, and then and it's fun, and you know, you get to chill with your boys. Um, yeah. so my next pick, let's take a tight end here. Let's take Dalton Kincaid. Yes. So, Dalton Kincaid's another guy, and look, Dalton Kincaid has some things he needs to clean up. Okay. Yeah. He is not a great downfield runner. He's mm -hmm. great in the middle of the field. He's not a great blocker. These are things that can be taught. You know what my comp is for him? Zach Ertz. Mike. Oh, Zach Ertz. Love yeah. that. I, 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 I'm watching him play and I'm like, this dude is Zach Ertz because it's that little, you know, lined up, not down on the line, just split out a little bit. And then it's the little button hook, 10, 11 mm -hmm. yards caught, not a ton after the catch. But the hands are solid. And I'm like, I watched Zach Ertz do that for eight years in Philadelphia. Yeah. It is the exact same thing that he did. And look, the guy made a career off of it. And he was a mm -hmm. fantastic fantasy asset for years. I love Dalton Kincaid. I think he's going to be yeah. fun. So, and I think anyone who drafts him as well, you're not drafting Dalton Kincaid to come in and block. Like, you know exactly. what you're going to get with him. So, Whoever takes him is going to use him in the pass game. I think what well, he nearly had 100 targets last year and dropped the ball twice. That's, yeah. That's really good. So Penn State played um, Utah in the – I forget what bowl game it was we had last year. Uh, shows how. I should know. I watched it. I don't remember what it was called. Um, unfortunately, Cam Rising got hurt early in the game, mm -hmm. and I was really excited to see like Cam Rising and see Dalton Kincaid, and I don't think Dalton mm -hmm. Kincaid got a target after Cam Rising. Uh, I'm like, oh, man. You know, like, I was excited. I mean, Penn State won, which I was happy about, but I was, I was like, mm -hmm. I really wanted to watch Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. It happened. What are you going to do? Yeah. So, yeah. what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take Devin a chain here. I know yes. I haven't done a full scout. I'm going with the mock that I saw where he went to Miami. If he Ooh. goes to Miami in Mike McDaniel's offense, love it. I've seen some comps of Raheem Mostert. Yeah. So if he could be that in that offense for that coach, yeah, then I'm, I'm going to take a shot on him. Another one was um, I saw him going to the Cardinals. Okay. James Conner is a question mark. He misses time every mm -hmm. year um, mm -hmm. when he's on the field. But I think Devin and Chain's a better backup than anything else that they have there. I understand you know, him's there, but. You know, a lot of people obviously are talking about how fast Devin and Chain is, but I actually don't think people are talking about it enough. Like I kind of looked in cause he's like on the track team at Texas A&M. Yeah. And I looked at, he's got like a profile in worldathletics.com. So I looked in, it's like, how fast is this guy really? He's fast enough that he, if he ran in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics and ran his personal best, he would have got to the semifinals in the hundred meters. Uh, he would have finished fifth place in the 200 meters overall. Wow. He would have just missed out on a medal. He's really world-class fast. Some people are saying Tyreek Hill speed. Yeah, I would I'm, say I'm like, so. Okay, I mean, I, I can't wait to to dive in. Um, yeah. yeah, but I think a chain at the two six is fine. And another guy, and I'm not taking him here, Deuce Vaughn. 
Um, he's mm-hmm. another guy that's pretty quick shifty. He's five six though, so um, yeah. you know you have to temper your expectations with a guy like that. He's probably like a mm-hmm. PPR third down back on a team like a Darren Sproles. That's going to be the comp. I guarantee mm-hmm. that'll be the comp is Darren Sproles. Yeah, I've that about a yeah. million times. Yeah. Um, um, so I think time wise, we're probably only going to have time for two rounds because I talk too much. Sorry, let's do two rounds. Let's do two rounds. That's fine. Um, can you go back to the all tab for me? Of course, what we have left like the top recruits. So we have Richardson, Kendra Miller, Zay Flowers, Rasheed Rice, um, Cedric mm-hmm. Tate, Hendon Hooker. So Hendon Hooker is a guy I would take in the like third, fourth round, depending on where he gets mm-hmm. drafted. You know, he's going to miss yeah. the year most likely he tore his ACL late, mm-hmm. which sucks. I feel bad for the guy. Um, go back to wide receivers for me, please. I want to see what wideouts we got, even though I just talked about most of them. <laughs> Good job, yeah, a Mike. A couple of guys we've mentioned there, right? And and yeah, Zay Flowers or she, right? And guy, guys like Xavier Hutchinson you mentioned earlier, but you're thinking right. he was maybe more of a third round pick. Maybe? Yeah, I mean, this would be a little rich for me on Xavier Hutchinson. Um, yeah, let's go back to the like you know, go to the tight ends again. I want to see what else we have because I All feel right. like I feel like in this draft, this is going to be a really good place to take some of these guys. So I mentioned some of these guys here. Um, I think Darnell Washington's ADP is a little high. Me too. Me personally. I like Darnell Washington from what I've seen. But let's go with my next tight end here. I'll take him. I I finished my scout. Let's take Luke Musgrave. Nice. Luke Musgrave only played two games last year. He got hurt. Again, mm-hmm. some phantom injury that no one's going to tell us about. Yeah. Six five, two hundred or six six, two hundred fifty pounds. The body's ready for the NFL. Yep. I was not expecting much, and then I was extremely surprised and happily okay. surprised when I watched them. Mm-hmm. Decently athletic. Not a ton after the catch, but I don't think Oregon State was asking him to do a lot. He has this uncanny ability to get lost in coverage where he does mm. this thing. He comes off the line and he dips down and it's like the defender's like, where'd he go? And then he gets open. <laughs> he, just, he has this uncanny ability. I don't understand it, but he gets open and he's pretty productive. So, yeah. I mean, the numbers aren't really there yet. You have to temper your expectations for numbers and college tight ends i feel like colleges are finally starting to come around on how to use a tight end so um, yeah that's my thoughts on him i'm a big fan I like that. so so there's going to be other guys i talked about sam laporta definitely keep him mm-hmm. on your radar for yeah. sure Payne durham keep him on your radar as well especially with the senior bowl um let's mm-hmm. go back to the running backs because i kind of like some of the running backs here now okay so i like what i see here roshan johnson his adp has been rising a lot um, he should have transferred, to be honest with mm-hmm. you. And Bijan came in and should have been the guy somewhere. He didn't. He stuck it out. Kind of like Brian Robinson mm-hmm. did. Um, yeah. Man, Dwayne McBride. I'm a huge Dwayne McBride fan, by the way. Um, yeah. You know who I actually want to take here? You're going to have to search for him. This might be a stretch. I want to take Tajay Spears. I, You know what? I knew you were going to say Tajay Spears because we were talking about the senior bowl, and he's the guy whose name I keep seeing like just lighten up that poor linebacker was he from pit actually the linebacker just absolutely yeah. crushed him on so that drill. yeah tajay spears is doing everything right he's getting hot at the exact right time yeah absolutely he he came and showed out against usc in the bowl game so for those of you who don't know tajay spears went to tulane um and for your overseas fans my overseas uh listeners here tulane is in louisiana they I okay. believe, play at the new orleans superdome or the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, whatever it is. Yep, yep. They have some of the ugliest uniforms you've ever seen. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Tajay Spears, man, you want to talk about Shifty? This is a dude, yeah. and they're, they're worried about size. 5'9", 205. He came in at. So he's a little bit yeah. shorter, but you want to talk about a bowling ball, man. Like 205 pounds, 509 with that speed, that vision, that ability mm-hmm. to catch the ball to the backfield, lighting up. Uh, a linebacker from Pitt. That's an ACC team. The ACC is no slouch, man. Oh, it's yeah. the ACC. Well, Clemson won two championships from the ACC, so shut up. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> just stop worrying about conferences unless you're talking about the Sun Belt, okay? Um, which I think actually <laughs> Tulane plays in. All right, don't listen to me. Anyway, uh, Tajay Spears, I love everything about him, and I told you I was yep. a big Dwayne McBride fan, and then I watched Tajay Spears, and I'm like, I like him better than Dwayne McBride, although Dwayne McBride from UAB, for those of you who don't know, University of Alabama at Birmingham. That's what UAB stands mm. for. No one likes Alabama. Um, the state. I <laughs> <laughs> did lead the NCAA in rushing last year, which is important to note. Almost oh, wow. Time. That is impressive. Yeah. Now, there's another guy on that team, too, 
Write this name down. If you want the discount Devin a chain for next year, Jermaine Brown Jr. from UAB. Jermaine Brown Jr. I like him as a runner, like Dwayne McBride. Better receiving chops. Dwayne McBride had two catches last year, five career cleats of catches. They just didn't use him that way. Okay. Yeah. But I'm, we're talking Tajay Spears. I love this dude. Just like a little yep. fire plug. Absolutely love him. So now I'm going to take Anthony Richardson. Yep. I think Anthony Richardson should have came back for another year. I understand okay. why he didn't. Get your money while you can. Yeah. Right? But mm-hmm. also with the NIL deals, like you could potentially make more in college than being like a fourth or fifth round draft pick. Yeah. But he's projected to go pretty high. I think he's really raw. I'm seeing him comp mm-hmm. to Cam Newton, which I don't necessarily hate the comp. I also don't really love it. Yeah. Um, I just think he's just really raw, man. And mm-hmm. if he goes somewhere and sits for a year, okay. Like if if for some reason the Ravens don't re-sign Lamar Jackson and they, they're like, Tyler Huntley's going to be our guy for a year, but then we're going to draft Anthony Richardson to sit behind him and learn. I'm okay. all in. I'm all in on something mm-hmm. like that. That team has shown that they can really, you know, they will gladly do whatever they have to do to build an offense around their quarterback. Um, so Anthony Richardson yeah. two nine, I'm fine with. Um, my next, you know, I was, is- I was listening to a, a really good podcast the other weekend, and it's very wise man, and it said, you know, Anthony Richardson could be the next Jalen Hurts, or he could be the next Caleb Mont. Do you know who that was? I do not. That was Michael Bauer said. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> I say a lot of stuff. I can't remember. Thank you for listening, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very possible. You know what I mean? I, look, yeah. Jalen Hurts, when they, the Eagles drafted him, I was pissed off. And it's not because, of, well, I was not a Jalen Hurts fan. I was a very big anti Jalen Hurts fan because I didn't think he was ready. Mm-hmm. Thought he should have been a yeah. fourth round pick. They had just signed Carson Wentz to a $100 million contract yeah. extension. That's why mm-hmm. I didn't need the turmoil. And look, it's working out right now. I, you know, I'm a Absolutely. Jalen Hurts hater. I can't change my tune until after the Super Bowl because I've been hating this long. So after the Super Bowl, you know what I mean? It's bad juju if you change it now. Us okay. Eagles fans are very superstitious, by the way. <laughs> that is one yeah. thing that is not known about the Eagles fan, fan base. Extremely superstitious. For example, I'm going to show you right now. These are the shirts and sweatshirts and jersey that I wore during the NFC Championship game. So they're all sitting on the back of my chair. They're, yeah. not, they're not being washed. And I'm going to wear them to during the Super Bowl. They, they have to just hang out there. Maybe that guy you see in the stadium was like, I need to throw this food. Otherwise, the <laughs> Eagles will lose. <laughs> Maybe, but do it at your own house, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so for my next pick, I'm going to take Kendra Miller here from TC. Okay. I wish he yeah. would have played in the national championship game. I think he had an ankle injury, something like that. Yeah. I like him. Explosive. Um, pretty athletic. I, I just, I really like what I see with this guy. So, um, Really good contact balance, I think, Miller, yeah, right? well balanced. Just a good all-around player. Um, I like mm-hmm. Kendra Miller. I don't have my full scout on him done yet, so I can't really mm-hmm. talk 100%. Um, yeah. Let's see. And for my next pick, um, we're going to wrap this up. We're almost done. It's kind of sad. Um, yeah. Let's go with Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers yeah. is another name really popping out. I think he went to the Shrine Bowl. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. Correct. Yeah, like people like, why wasn't he invited to the Senior Bowl? I don't know. They don't tell us that stuff. We don't know. Yeah. But Zay Flowers is a guy who I think would be like a really good slot wide receiver. And a lot of people are like, um, put him in Dallas. And I was like, okay, I could see that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I he's, if he went there. My only worry for him is he could end up being like one of those gadgety guys. Like, but I think he's, like he's good. I, I would love to see him more from the slot though. That would be really good in the NFL team. Yeah, I agree. And, um, one last pick. I right, go back to the running backs for me. Let's see if I can squeeze one more running back in here. This is a good running back class. You know what? Keep it chalk. Right up top there. Chase Brown. Let's get him. And if I was doing a 3-1, I would have taken Kenny McIntosh next from Georgia. But Chase Brown from the University of Illinois, the only running back in Illinois history to rush for a thousand yards in back-to-back years. Oh. Which is kind of cool. Start. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Chase Brown, yeah, you want to talk about a guy who physical, balanced, mm-hmm. good vision. Mm-hmm. It's Chase Brown. It's pretty it's pretty stocky build. He can take the contact. I'm not worried about Chase Brown at all. So he's a guy I like. And yeah, I think that's uh that's a good draft. Thank you for having me on, Max. Yeah. Is Max your real name, by the way, or is that a nickname? No, so my my name is Connor Mike McGill. So it's just the 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 second the first part of my surname is Max. So yeah, okay. uh, Connor by <laughs> By birth. I'm not I'm never gonna call you that. 
Yeah, I'm no, only calling you Mags. That's that, that's all. I'm yeah, gonna play. <laughs> that's 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 perfect. That's that's kind of on on brand for here. So I'm I'm happy with Mags. That's good. Um, but yeah, that's it. Like you said, Mike, that's the end of our draft. Let's we'll put it up one more time actually, and we'll we'll yeah. go through exactly exactly who you've taken. It is it is beautiful for everyone watching. If you're if you're not watching on YouTube, you have to see it. It's absolutely glorious. And uh, I will got, say. If this was a one quarterback league, it looks way different. I think if it's a one yeah. quarterback league, you don't sniff a quarterback till the one eleven at the earliest. I think I've seen from the mocks that I've yeah. done. I mean, other mocks I've seen people do it differently, but most of the ones that I've done, like Stroud or Bryce Young or Will Levis, is like the one eleven at the earliest. I think that's perfectly fair as well. Yeah, um, I agree. So let's have a look at our our super flex one. We have Bijan Robinson at the one hundred one, as expected. Jameer Gibbs at one two. Then we have Stroud. Jackson Smith and Jigba, Will Levis, then Bryce Young. We got Tank Bigsby as the third running back coming off the board. We've got a couple of receivers, Addison and Quinton Johnston. Then we have Zach Charbonnet, Shaw Tucker, and Josh Downs, who rounds up the first round. Round number two, we've got three tight ends, including Michael Mayer at 2 1. We got Keyshawn Boutet, Jalen Hyatt, Zach Evans. Then we got Dalton Kincaid, the other tight end, Devon Chain, Luke Musgrave climbing up everybody's boards now. We've got yeah. Taj Spears lighting up the senior bowl. Anthony Richardson, Kendra Miller, Zay Flowers, and then ended up the draft with, with your guy, Mr. Brown, in it running back. So absolutely love that draft, Mike. Lots of new information for people listening. I'm sure a couple of players we've not really dug into too much on the hot seat yet. So it was absolutely great to have you back on and, and chatting about these rookies. And just before you go, do you want to remind everybody where they can find you online? Sure. You can find me on Twitter at Rewind CEO. Not on Twitter as much. I'm mostly chilling in the Discord with our Patreon, uh, but definitely check that out if you want. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Dynasty Rewind. If not, that's fine too. Look at our YouTube. You can subscribe there. That helps just as much. And our audio is available everywhere. You could find audio podcasts except for iHeartRadio because I'm still waiting on that confirmation email. iHeart, get on it. Yeah, yeah, iHeart, come on. They listen to this. They'll sort it out. It, was, this. it said it would come in within two to three minutes, and that was two to three weeks ago. And I'm like, I'm continuously refreshing my inbox here. Come on. <laughs> mm. Do you know what, Mike? I'll put I'll put a word in. Don't worry. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Nice. No, uh, thanks again, Mike, for coming on. And thank you, everybody, for listening. And remember, for anything Dynasty, you need to know. Keep it locked in on the Certified Inferno. And stay lit. We'll see you next time.